Hello and welcome to A Word for This Day podcast. I'm Jory Schaefer, the show's host and creator, and it is my joy and pleasure to welcome you today. Welcome to anyone who's found us for the first time. I'm so thankful that you are here. Uh, Please don't run off quite yet. Please stick around for a bit and let's see what the Lord has for us today. And welcome back to all you regular listeners. I am so thankful that you are here. I love being on this journey with you. It brings me such joy to be on this journey with you and thinking about God's word each day. And I need to tell you something that was brought to my attention. I didn't see the email until uh, the day that I'm recording this. So it actually was that little fan mail thing that you can click in the show notes that says uh, send me a text. And so I'm recording this episode for the 24th of September on the 22nd of September. That message came through, um, I guess, on the 21st, and I didn't see it till just a few minutes ago. But it was from a regular listener, Donna, and I'm so thankful for Donna because she said, did you know that your uh, recording that, that was supposed to be for September the 19th was a repeat of September the 18th even though it said it was Daniel 9 19 it was the one from Psalm that was the same one from the day before and friends she's the only one that let me know about that (laughs) I had no idea that it happened and it was totally an operator error it was on my fault I have worried with almost a thousand episodes that I would do that sometime well on episode what would that have been 994 Uh, 993, it happened. And so um, I am so thankful, Donna, that you let me know. I went back. I have put the correct uh, audio file in there. I must have just clicked the wrong one and uploaded the same one from the 18th. But friends, if you hear that, let me know right away so I can fix it. Now, it wouldn't have mattered probably to those who were new who were listening. They would have thought, well, she just messed up her her dates. Um, But, oh, it just... It troubles me so that I had the same audio file two days in the row and that you all were expecting to hear the one from on Daniel and you got Psalms two days in a row. Um, and that also makes me think, are you listening closely or did you just not get to listen that day? Because I know how that is. Not all of us can listen every day. Um, but please, if you notice something I am human. I will make a mistake. Send me a message so I can fix it or so I can apologize and make it right Uh, because it was certainly not intentional. And I'm just, I'm so thankful for you all. I love, I truly do love you. I love being on this journey. I wish I knew who all of you were. I wish we could sit around a table and visit, but the Lord doesn't have it that way for now. So we'll just keep doing what we're doing. I do pray for you regularly that the Lord would draw you closer to to him and that you would be very intentional about your time with him and i also uh, would encourage you to share this podcast with your friends family neighbors strangers just anyone who um may you think may receive a blessing from it and i do truly love to hear from you even if it's to tell me that i messed up (laughs) please let me know please let me know because i want to make things right um i i don't want to misrepresent anything in any way i just uploaded the wrong uh, audio file and and it may happen again you know if the lord tarries and we have nearly a thousand more episodes or whatever his will is um, it may very well happen again but i can assure you that i will be watching much closer than i have uh, up till now Um, but i am so thankful for each one of you and i love being on this journey. Well, our verse for the day for the 24th of September comes from Mark's gospel. Mark chapter 9 verse 24 and it reads as follows from the Legacy Standard Bible. Immediately the boy's father cried out and was saying, I do believe. Help my unbelief. Oh friends, this should be a heart cry of all of us. Now, we're going to get into this story. We are going to see uh, what was going on that would cause him to say that. But friends, it is all about the heart. And the heart affects uh, what we hold our uh, beliefs in, what we have our faith in. And what is in our heart really does direct our thoughts. It directs our actions. 
and we have to refocus regularly on the one in whom we uh, place our trust and our faith and our hope because this world will uh, come in and distract us. That devil will distract us. And so we always have to go back to what we know is true. And that is that God is faithful. He loves us. He sent his son, Jesus, to die for us. And And we know that God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whosoever would believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. It's by grace you've been saved through faith. It's not of your own doing. It's not of works. It's a gift of God that no one may boast. And so when you see faith, When you see believe, those words have the same root in the Greek, and so they're somewhat interchangeable. So when you see faith, think belief. When you see belief, think faith. And it it matters uh, who and what we put our trust in. So um, I'm excited for us to park here. You know, if you've been on this journey with me for very long, this is the time I think it's wise for us to think about where we are in the Scripture and to uh, look at uh, what book or letter we're in, who may have written it, what was going on, what was going on in the verses surrounding our verse for the day so that we can have the appropriate context so that we can uh, better understand it, better apply it, and better live it out and share it because it's so important not only for us just to read God's Word but to study His Word, to live it out and to share it. So we are in the Gospels, in the New Testament, And the New Testament begins with the four Gospels. Um, Then it moves to New Testament history, which is the book of Acts. Then into Paul's letters. There's eight of those. and then No, not eight of those. There's 13 of those. And then into the general letters, there's eight of those. And then into that final book of the uh, New Testament, which is a book of prophecy, that book of Revelation. So the Gospels, that word gospel means good news, and these do tell us the good news of Jesus' earthly ministry, his time here on earth. Uh, That's what gospel means. And uh, they they were written by four different men from four different backgrounds with four different writing styles. Two of the writers of the Gospels, Matthew and John, were in Jesus' original apostle group. So they walked with Jesus, they talked with him, they saw his miracles in person. They saw how he acted in private. They saw how he acted when the large crowds were there. Uh, They were there when the seas were calmed, when the storms were calmed. They were there when Lazarus was raised from the dead, called out of that tomb. They saw these miracles. And um, then the others... Luke and Mark were not in that original apostle group. They received their information from those who were. And we've talked about that when we were in Luke just a few days ago. How um, isn't that the model that we have now? Someone who knows, who has a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus tells us about Jesus. And then when we become uh, a believer or we are saved, then we are to tell others. And that's exactly what happened. Um, We know that Mark was based on some of the earliest uh, church historical records and those who would would have received this gospel directly, that Mark was a very close traveling companion with the apostle Peter. And we see that Peter describes him as Mark, my son. We read in Acts that when one of the times when Peter was released from jail miraculously, miraculously, I can't talk today, he went to the home of John Mark's mother uh, first. And so I'm not sure if that's the first time that he met Mark or if they knew them before then or what. We know that John Mark was a traveling companion uh, with the Apostle Paul for a short time, that he was a cousin of Barnabas, and that they he went on a, a missionary journey with the Apostle Paul and Barnabas, but for some reason he left the work. Um, and later when Paul said to Barnabas, let's go back and visit some of the places that we've been. Barnabas asked to take John Mark with him again. And uh, 
Paul didn't want to. He didn't want to uh, take someone who had left them in the middle of the work. And we don't know, like I said, what all went on there. But that caused a disagreement. And Paul and Barnabas separated ways. Uh, Paul took Silas. Barnabas and John Mark went somewhere else. And uh, later, though, we see that all was restored, that there was a reconciliation. And uh, Paul later describes John Mark as someone who is useful to him and then also encourages others uh, to welcome him uh, when he came. And so I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful that we see that whatever was the issue before got straightened out. And then when you think about just the goodness of God and God's providence in uh, letting the apostle Peter or setting it up such that the Apostle Peter would be somewhat of a mentor to John Mark. If Mark left because he was uh, having second thoughts or second guesses or, or whatever, and we don't know what that was, think about what a blessing that God would use Peter to be one to encourage him uh, because Peter denied the Lord Jesus right after he told him he would go with him to the death on that night when Jesus was betrayed and he denied the Lord Jesus three times and uh, and then uh, God used him mightily after that to spread the gospel and to be a pillar of the church. And um, all of us are sinners. All of us make mistakes. All of us do things that we look back on, I think, and wish that we would have done differently or that we wouldn't have done. And aren't you thankful for God's grace and his mercy and his love and his forgiveness? And I think we see that here with Mark. Mark is one, his gospel is the shortest of the four. And he just moves along at a very fast rate. He jumps right in at the beginning with the um, account of John the Baptist. And then he goes straight into Jesus' ministry. We see the gospel, I'm sorry, the um, parables in Mark's gospel. And it just moves right along. And I love it that the Lord would give us these four different gospels with four different points of view so we can take them all together and get more of a better picture as to uh, what it may have been like when Jesus was here. Um, but I am going to um, jump forward to where we find ourselves in Mark chapter 9. Now, we were in Mark's gospel, it looks like, three times last month when we were talking about Jesus feeding the 5,000. So Jesus's disciples and his apostles had seen him uh, perform these miracles. They had seen um, these miracles over the physical realm. In other words, healing people. They had seen it over the natural realm. In other words, he um, had multiplied those loaves and fishes and fed thousands. They uh, saw him calm the storms, all those things. They saw him turn the water into wine and who knows what else. Uh, only the Lord knows. And like John wrote in his gospel that uh, everything was not written down that the Lord Jesus wrote because he thought if, if everything was written down, and I'm paraphrasing this, that there wouldn't be enough books in the world to hold all of the things that Jesus did. And then we see his um, his miracles and his power over the the spiritual realm where he had cast out demons before and he had raised the dead and you know the interesting thing about uh what we read and this is going to very much i think uh tie in with when we get to our uh, the story surrounding our verse for the day is when jesus called his apostles and uh, we read in matthew's gospel in chapter uh, 10 beginning in verse 1 it says and summoning his 12 disciples jesus gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal every kind of disease and every kind of sickness and so he took from his uh disciples 12 men that he called apostles and then he gave them this authority when they sent him out so think about this when we get ready to read what was going on um in our story in our recounting of what happened with this um 
this father and his son that we're going to get to here in a minute. Now, right before this, in Mark's gospel, he um, gave the account of the transfiguration where Peter, James, and John uh, went up on the mountain with the Lord Jesus, and they saw him transfigured in all his glory. And they were there when the uh, the voice from heaven came, like we read in chapter 9 of Mark, verse 7, that says, This is my beloved son. Listen to him. So they had that experience. They also had all their other experiences. And then um, I want to uh, hop over here to chapter 9, verse 14, and then read forward to our verse for the day. But that kind of sets the tone uh, for what's going on. And so it says, And when they came back to the disciples, so this is talking about when they had come back down off that mountain where Jesus had been transfigured, and he had told them not to tell anybody about this until after he was resurrected, and they didn't even know what he was talking about that, about resurrection. It says in verse 9, And as they were coming down from the mountain, he gave them orders not to recount to anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man rose from the dead. And they seized upon that statement, arguing with one another what rising from the dead meant. So they didn't even know when he spoke of that. What did he mean? But then we hop over here to verse 14. It says, And when they came back to the disciples, so Peter, James, and John, and Jesus, they saw a large crowd around them and the scribes arguing with them. And immediately when the entire crowd saw him, they were amazed. And as they ran up, they were greeting him. So get this picture. They've come down off that Mount of Transfiguration, Jesus, Peter, James, and John. And the other disciples were down there. And when all the crowd saw that Jesus was coming, um, they uh, were amazed. And they ran up and they were greeting him. But there was also some arguments going on when Jesus came up to there. And so in verse 16, it says, and he asked him, what are you arguing with them? In other words, what are y'all discussing? And one of the crowd answered him, teacher, I brought you my son possessed with a spirit, which makes him mute. And whenever it seizes him, it slams him to the ground and he foams at the mouth and grinds his teeth and becomes rigid. I told your disciples to cast it out and they could not do it. And he answered them and said, O unbelieving generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring him to me. And they brought the boy to him. When he saw him immediately, the spirit threw him into a convulsion and falling to the ground, he began rolling around, foaming at the mouth. And he asked his father, how long has this been happening to him? And he said, from childhood. And it has often thrown him both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. And Jesus said to him, if you can. All things are possible to him who believes. And then here's our verse. Immediately the boy's father cried out and was saying, I do believe. Help my unbelief. And I'm going to read right past it. It says, Now when Jesus saw that a crowd was rapidly gathering, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to him, You mute and deaf spirit, I command you, come out of him and do not enter him again. And after crying out and throwing him into terrible convulsions, it came out, and the boy became so much like a corpse that most of them said he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and raised him, and he stood up. And when he came into the house, his disciples began questioning him privately. Why could we not cast it out? And he said to them, This kind cannot come out by anything but prayer. Now, there are so many things within this passage that I just love to park on. But we're going to back up and think about this part about faith first. And Lord willing, we will uh, pick up toward the end of the month with that final verse, uh, that uh, verse 29, if the Lord allows. But think about what had happened um, And think about how this was asked. And, of course, we weren't there. We didn't see the demeanor. We didn't see the tone uh, in which it was asked. But when I read this in verse 17 and 18, it says uh, toward the end of verse 18, and this was the Father speaking, it said, I told your disciples to cast it out, and they could not do it. Now, I don't know if that's just a translation of I asked, I requested, but 
if he was being kind of smart and said, I told them to do it and they couldn't do it. But like I said, we weren't there. We didn't hear the tone. We didn't see, was he humble when he came? Uh, Was he just expressing that he had spoken that request to them? Um, And then what did Jesus say? Oh, unbelieving generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring him to me. Notice that Jesus, it almost sounds like he's he's exasperated or frustrated. Remember that they had the uh, apostles had been given the authority to cast out demons. And Lord willing, we will talk about this that Jesus mentions down in verse 29 here in a few days. But um, there was something that stopped them from being able to do what the Lord had given them the authority to do. And um, it was, it appears that it was due to their faith because Jesus describes them as an unbelieving generation. And remember what we talked about at the top of the podcast, that when you see belief and faith, those are are somewhat interchangeable. And um, we read that, uh, Jesus asked how how long it had been going on, and then the man says, if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. And Jesus says, if you can. You know, this man probably didn't realize how that came across. He, uh, he was talking to the one who was there when the worlds were put together through whom everything was made, who had all this power, who was uh, God with them right there. And he says, if you can, do we sometimes do that to God? Uh, Do we just say, well, if God God could do anything about this, acting like um, he is somehow limited in his power, acting like or or believing in our heart that he's limited in his might because he doesn't do things the way that we want them done. Oh, friends, he is not limited in any way, shape, form, or fashion. He is fully all-powerful, almighty. He, as I mentioned, is the creator of all. He has power over everything. He can do anything that he wills if it brings him the most glory. And so we must be so careful about how we approach him uh, because he can do anything that he pleases. He can do anything if it is the best thing and in accordance with his will. But we mustn't get into that um, mindset that just because we think it's best, that that is the best way or the right way or the the. Uh, perfect way because he could see the whole picture. But I love this response uh, that the man gave to Jesus, and may this be our response. Immediately, the boy's father cried out and was saying, I do believe. Help my unbelief. Friends, that needs to be our heart's cry. Increase my faith, Lord. I know who you are. Increase my faith in you, that you will do what is best. Now, there are those, and and that old devil, as we've talked about, likes to come in and twist things and say, well, if it didn't, if you prayed for something and it didn't happen the way you want it, then your faith is, he'll do it two ways. He'll say either your faith is not strong enough or, uh, God doesn't love you enough or God's not big enough. And we have to be very careful. Do not listen to those lies of the devil. But we can ask the Lord to increase our faith so that we will trust him all the more in the things that we don't understand um, and that we will want uh, but because of our faith in him and because we know who he is, that we will want what he wants and what he thinks is best above all, uh, denying ourselves, denying our desires. Now, the more and the longer that we walk with him and the closer we walk with him, our desires will line up with his. And what a blessing that he allows that. But, oh, may this be our prayer in all ways and in all things. I do believe. Help my unbelief. And, you know, I'm reminded about what was in uh, written in Romans when Paul was writing about uh, Abraham, because often I think, well, how 
how can my faith be increased? How can, how can I do that? Well, we can't do that. God does that. <laughs> but we read uh, that Abraham in Romans 4.20, it says, No unbelief made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God. Now that is from the ESV. I love that, um, the way that it is uh, put in the ESV. If we look in the LSB, it says, Yet res- with respect to the promise of God, he did not waver in unbelief, but grew strong in faith, giving glory to God. In other words, by giving glory to God, he grew strong in his faith. That is how our faith is increased. In all things, we give God the glory. In all things, we give him thanks and praise. In all things, we uh, defer our will and say, Lord, whatever is best uh, where you'll get the most glory. And the more you do that, the more God increases our faith because we trust him all the more. And it's just a, it's a, a mindset that we have to do. We can't will anything that God Uh, that is not in God's will. You know, the name it and claim it crew, the word of faith crew will say, well, you just need to believe it strong enough and then you can have your jet and your millions of dollars and your all the thing that you want. And uh, if you don't get those things then your faith just wasn't strong enough. No, our faith is not in stuff. Our faith is not in what we ask. Our faith is in the one who provides it if he thinks that that is best. And so what do we do? We ask him to help our unbelief in him, not in our ability to ask, but in him. Um, everything is possible for the one who believes in him because we want what he wants. And so, oh, Lord, change our hearts, uh, get our minds and our hearts focused on you uh, that that must be our heart cry i do believe help my unbelief encourage one another with this today friends and be encouraged that god does want the best for us and when things are not going the way we want that maybe it's not the best he has the greater yes he sees all of it he knows what is best uh, but if we ask and we and we trust him completely he will Um, increase our faith as we give him more and more of the glory. Blessings to you, friends. Until next time.